countrymen. Good countrymen, let me depart alone and for my sake stay here with Antony. Do grace to Caesar's corpse and grace his speech, tending to Caesar's glories, which Mark Antony, by our permission, is allowed to make. I, I do entreat you, not a man depart, save I alone, till Antony have spoke. Stay home, let us hear Mark Antony. We'll hear him. Noble Antony, go up. Go up. For Brutus' sake, I am beholding to you. Now, what does he say of Brutus? For best he speaks, no harm of Brutus here. He's almost a tyrant. He's a blessed and rose his reason. Friends, Romans, countrymen, lend me your ears. I come to bury Caesar, not to praise him. The evil that men do lives after them, the good is oft interred with their bones, so let it be with Caesar. The noble Brutus have told you Caesar was ambitious. Yes. If it was so, it was a grievous fault. And grievously hath Caesar answered it. Here under leave of Brutus and the rest, for Brutus is an Honorable men. Yes. So are they all, all honorable men? Yes. Come I to speak in Caesar's funeral. <laughs> he was my friend. Faithful and just to me. But Brutus says he was ambitious. And Brutus is an honorable man. He has brought many captives home to Rome, whose ransoms did the general coffers fill. Did this in Caesar seem ambitious? When that the poor has cried, Caesar hath wept. Ambition should be made of sterner stuff. Yet Brutus says he was ambitious. And Brutus is an honorable man. You all did see that on the Lupercal, I thrice presented him a kingly crown, which he did thrice refuse. Was this ambition? Yet Brutus says he was ambitious. And sure, he is an honorable man. I speak not to disprove what Brutus spoke, but here I am to speak what I do know. You all did love him once, not without cause. What cause withholds you then to mourn for him? Oh, judgment! Thou art fled to brutish beasts, and men have lost their reason. Bear with me. My heart is in the corp in there with Caesar, and I must pause till it come back to me. Methinks there is much reason in his saying. 